Mike. I guess you can just start it from here. Okay. Thanks, Rob. Uh, we're just going to wait for video to come up first. There we go. So, yeah, we have head coach Wes Miller. Um, we will start with an opening statement from him, but for those media members, if you have a question for Coach Miller after his opening statement, we ask that you use the raise hand function to indicate you would like to ask a question. Uh, when you're called on, please state your name and affiliation. Please understand that Coach cannot see you, so he needs to know your name and your affiliation as you ask the question. But first, Coach Miller, if you could just give us an opening statement. Yeah, well, uh, first you got to uh, tip your cap tip to Florida State and State. Leonard's team. Um, they are really difficult to prepare for. They play a style of play that we haven't seen all year with some length and athleticism and depth that we haven't seen all year. I thought our guys did a great job of preparing this week. Um, I thought at times we did a good job of executing our game plan. At times we didn't. Er early in, in the game, it was obvious we were having a really hard time getting matched in transition. And, you know, they convert at a really high rate when they have opportunities and numbers in the open court. Um, and then there were times we they didn't have numbers, but we weren't able to get matched and build out. And, you know, Gray, among others, is getting downhill. And then, you know, they're taking advantage of their size and ability at the rim. So that was something that I thought as we settled into the game, we were a little bit – we had some chances once we were able to get, get back and get our defense set. Um, I thought at times we were really good defensively. I was really proud of some of our defensive possessions, maybe not quite good enough. Um, but, you know, I, we're a program that's built on the defensive end of the floor. I, th I thought our ball screen D at times was really good. I thought we were pretty scrappy and quick to the ball, and that allowed us to stay in the game. Um, and, and, you know – uh, I think the thing that hurts the most is you feel like you had some chances. You know, you're in a two-possession game um, in the last couple minutes, and uh, I'm, I'm feeling for Isaiah Miller, you know, missing the two front ends of the one-and-ones. Uh, he's worked so hard on his jump shot, and you can see it with his numbers. Guys, we're not even, you know, we're not sitting here in this tournament without him. He's meant more to our program than I could ever articulate, um, but I feel for him because I know he'll take that hard. So certainly we missed some chances there. I thought Hayden Kobal had a couple good looks, and then you have the shot there around the minute mark with the side out of bounds, and Keyshawn Langley takes a tough one. But, you know, I think it's hard to score against their set defense, and he's one of our better shooters and has good range. So I think I can live with that. So we did have our chances. I thought we had some big stops there late, and then I thought we didn't have some big stops there late, and, and then again, weren't able to convert in the half quarter on the free throw line. But the biggest thing I'm proud of is no matter what happened, no matter how bad it looked at times or it kind of felt like it could get away, our guys just kind of kept fighting. That's the team that we've been all year. That's why we're here. And uh, if anything, I'm really proud to be the head coach at UNCG. I'm really proud to be the head coach of those guys because of the way that they carried themselves, not just tonight, but all year. So am I disappointed? Absolutely. I thought we blew an opportunity, uh, but I'm not – I'm not anything else but proud of how our guys handled themselves and represented our program and our university today on the floor. Thanks, Coach. Once again, media members, if you have a question, use the raise hand function. Uh, and when you're called upon, please state your name and affiliation. We're going to start with Joe Sierra. Hi, Wes. This is Joe Sierra from the News and Record. You're down 23-7 early. Was that a product of no matter how hard you prepare, you can't simulate what they're really like in a game sitting, setting? Well, I think it's a couple things, Joe. I think first, they've been great in the first half of games. And they've done that to almost everybody they played against. They jump on you early. Um, and so that's something they've done all year. We talked about that with our team. That was highly possible. And we kind of had to stay the course. So I think first, you got to give the credit to them. Uh, but I do think it took us a while, for whatever reason that is. It took us a, lot, a while to kind of settle in and go, we can play in this game. And I'm going to look down here at the stat sheet real quick because I hadn't seen it yet, but we have ten turnovers. I'm guessing three or four of those are in the first five or six minutes. Um, and it was just uncharacteristic stuff, you know, dropping the ball on a pitch-ahead pass, yeah, I mean, you know, like passing and catching, being a little sped up. And, again, give Florida State credit for that, but it did take us a while to settle in and – I do think that's the difference in the game, you know, because every time you claw back, it was hard to kind of get over the hump because you'd built a pretty big hole there early, in both halves, by the way. Okay, our next question is going to come from Carter Hill. 
Hey, Coach. Uh, Carter Hill with Fifth Quarter. Congratulations on a fantastic season. You talked about it a little bit in your, your opening, but what do you think you proved to the nation today about UNC Greensboro basketball to those that may have been unfamiliar about your program? Well, I, I told the guys in the locker room, you know, it's about continuing to take steps forward when you're building the program. And it's, it's been a decade here. And the one thing that I'm really proud of is we continue to take steps forward in each each class, each group group of kids that have come through have taken it another step. And Isaiah Miller's our lone senior, and he's the first player in UNCG history to go to two NCAA tournaments. So he took it a step farther than those that came before him that put him in this position. And so uh, we got to now take this thing another step and get to the point that we get over the hump in one of these games. So I hope what people see is – we're not just a, a team that had a good year, a program that had a good year. We're a team and a program that continues to grow. Uh, and and that's, that's the goal as we hit this offseason. We're going to continue to grow. And we got to be back in this position. Um, but we got to be back in this position and get over the hump because we've been here two of the last four years. And we've been in one or two possession games in the last four minutes in, e in, in each game that we play in the NCAA tournament and not, not able to get over the hump. So we got to take another step forward. But I hope the nation and college basketball – sees that we're really competitive, uh, that we've been consistent, and, and hopefully we'll keep building on that. Okay, we're going to go back to Joe Serrera. I believe, Joe, you had a follow-up. Yeah, thanks Thanks again, Wes. Um, yeah, they don't make a, a three-pointer in the game. That almost never happens. We know how good a three-point shooting team they are. You held them way below their season scoring average. How proud of you are, are you of the defense that your team played tonight and all, all season? Well, I, I'm listen. Uh, one of our the things that we really value here, in terms of style of play, is the defensive side of the ball first. Uh, we recruit to that. We demand that every day. We work at that every day. So I'm, I'm I am proud. I'm proud of some of those defensive possessions. I'm proud to look down and see that they were 0 for 9 from three when that was a, a big key because that's the leading three point shooting team in the ACC coming into this tournament. Um, now, I, I'd like to have some of those transition defensive possessions back where we don't talk throughout the course of the game and we give them an easy basket. I'd like to have some of those possessions that we don't keep rotating or stay down in the stance or lose, lose sight of man and ball and get beat back door. I mean, there's some possessions defensively that really cost us. So, but overall, I'm proud as can be, Joe. Um, and then I thought tonight, not just us. I mean, you go, you go back and you watch every team Florida State's played against this year. It is really difficult to score against their set defense in the half court. They switch everything. Um, you know, they're huge. They, they, they have energy for defense. Um, so it's really hard to score. We needed to score off of our defense to have success. And I thought when we were playing well in segments tonight, that's what we were doing. Because once it got set, it was, we knew it was going to be fairly difficult. Okay, our next question is going to come from Daniel Rodriguez. Daniel, go ahead. Hey, Coach, uh, this is Daniel Rodriguez with This League with Daniel. I wanted to ask you, what do you hope your players take away from the experience maybe down the line 10, 15 years from now, being able to play in the tournament, especially with everything going on right now? Uh, I, listen, this is a lifetime experience. Um, you know, I was fortunate oh. that I got to experience it three times as a player. So I, I know what that feeling is like. And I also know now, you know, 15 years removed, yeah, around 15 years removed and getting old here. But I also know now how you look back and how you remember those moments and you, you have a pride that you played in this event, which is the greatest sporting event in the world. Um, and so it's just – it's thrilling for me as a coach. When we cut down nets in Asheville two weeks ago, um, it's thrilling for me to know that they're going to have those same memories and they're going to have that same experience they'll remember for the rest of their life. And then the, the, the final thing with that is this is a – NCAA tournament unlike any other. So it's one thing to say you played in it. It'll be something else to say you played in this one uh, because of, as you mentioned, all the stuff we've dealt with this year. Okay, our next question is going to come from uh, Kevin McCaskill, Jr. Kevin, go ahead. This is Kevin McCaskill, Jr. from FP Sports out of Springfield, Massachusetts. Uh, Coach Miller, what improvements have you seen from Isaiah Miller over the course of his career at UNC Greensboro? Holy moly. 
Um, how much time you got? I mean, he, he's – when he walked through the door, he was competitive, maybe as competitive as anybody I've ever seen. He had world-class athleticism, um, and he had world-class instincts, basketball instincts, especially to the basketball or defensively and that, and that nature. But – so he had that, and he has that stuff now, and it's improved. But every other part of his game has come leaps and bounds. You know, his freshman year, we would never play him at point guard. We wouldn't even think about it because he couldn't make good decisions. He couldn't handle with his left hand. Um, he couldn't finish with his left hand. We, weren't, he, we told him he wasn't allowed to shoot jump shots. Um, and every year he's just added to his game and, and added, uh, you know, something or multiple things to become a better player. And, you know, so he's improved in every way. You know, he tested the, the draft waters last year and was told, hey, you got to be a little bit better of a decision maker at point guard. Uh, he had like a one-to-one -one assist to error ratio. You look up this year, he's like 53rd in the nation in assist rate on Ken Palm. He wasn't even in, in ranked in that category a year ago. That's just from one year to the next. They say you got to shoot the ball better. He shoots almost 50% from the field this year, and we ask him to take some really difficult shots and jump shots off the bounce. He improves his free throw percentage by 10%. I mean, that, those are just some examples, but he's improved in every way. He's, he's learned how to understand the game and how it works with five guys on both ends of the floor. Um, if he keeps improving at this rate, you know, I, uh, th there's just no, there's no ceiling to what he can accomplish. And I, I do believe if somebody gives him a chance, he can, he can play in the NBA right now because he can guard in the NBA right now and he can guard the position that's probably the most difficult to guard, and that's the point guard position. And you saw him guarding ball screens tonight. I mean, I mean he, he gets a couple steals and makes a couple plays tonight when the game was on the line defensively against guys that are going to get their names called. And I think that's why he can play at the next level. Okay, we got time for one more question. We're going to go back to Joe Serrera uh, one more time. Go ahead, Joe. Thanks, Wes and, and moderator. Um, you mentioned Isaiah. What, what, do you, what did you tell him after he left it all on the floor tonight? And what do you tell some of the guys who are going to follow him, like Keyshawn, who really stepped up today and has in the second half of the season? You know, I just I, I told him after the game how much he's meant to this program and to the university and to Greensboro and to me personally and, and all the people in that room. I told him how much I love him and how much I'll never be able to express to him, how much I love him that I, I don't have the words to describe that. Um, and then I told all those guys that he, he took our program a step further than the guys that got it to where it was when he walked in the door. And it's their job now to take it another step forward, further. That's the best way to honor him. Um, that's more or less what I said, and that's exactly how I feel, Joe. Thank you. Okay, thanks a lot, Coach. Thanks for your time. Yeah, thanks, guys. We will have a UNC Greensboro player here in just a few minutes. Uh, once again, uh, this is the UNC Greensboro press conference. We will have a Spartans player here in just a few minutes. The UNC Greensboro player who will be coming to join the press conference is going to be senior guard Isaiah Miller. We will have Isaiah in just a few minutes here. So uh, just as a heads up, we will have senior guard Isaiah Miller. Once again, uh, once Isaiah gets here, if you have questions for him, please use the raise hand function. And when you are called upon, please give your name and your affiliation reminder that uh, the players and the coaches cannot see you on this Zoom call. So please give your name and your affiliation before you ask your question. Thank you very much. Uh, Matt, uh, yeah. Hey, Mike. 
Okay, we are joined by uh, UNC Greensboro senior guard, Isaiah Miller. Again, media people, media members, if you have a question for Isaiah, please use the raise hand function. And when you're called upon, uh, please give your name and your affiliation. A reminder that Isaiah cannot see you, so please give your name and affiliation. Uh, we're gonna get our first question here. It is from Kevin McCaskill Jr. Uh, go ahead, Kevin. How you doing, Isaiah? How you doing? Um, I'm good, man. Are you are you coming back for another year? That's the first part of the question. And um, what was your freshman year like? Uh, Coach Miller said that you weren't allowed to do a few things and that he wouldn't play you at point guard. Um, so that's the two questions. Are you coming back? And what was your freshman year like? Um, I don't know what I'm doing right now. As of now, I'm, I'm focused on leaving after, after I was finished. Uh, yeah, but... Uh, I'm really focused on leaving after this season. And uh, freshman year, yeah, I, I wasn't allowed to do half the stuff I'm doing right now. That took a lot of growth, a lot of uh, progression throughout the years. So uh, I was ready to do all that stuff my sophomore year. And I excelled on, on my abilities as I kept going on as a junior in this year. OK, our next question is going to come from Joe Serrera. Go ahead, Joe. Yeah, I say Joe Serrera from the News and Record. Rough start to the game, down twenty-three to seven, but you guys fought back. What what was the 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 problem or the struggle early? I mean, I know you guys were prepared for them. Was it that it's really hard to simulate just how big and good they are? I mean, yeah. I mean, when you got guys that's out there six eight, six nine, they're a really good team. I mean, a thing that really struck us was a uh, was transition D. That really guys at the beginning. Uh, we, we we couldn't get back at the beginning and that what made they run. That's a really good team. Once again, if you have a question for Isaiah, please use the raise hand function. Um, if we don't have any other questions, which it appears that right now we don't, up oh, there we go. Uh, we'll take one from Daniel Rodriguez. Go ahead, Daniel. Sorry. Oh, no problem. Um, this is Daniel Rodriguez with This League with Daniel. Um, I wanted to ask you, just going over you know, all your years at UNCG, all the awards, what does it mean to be playing in the tournament and just uh, maybe possibly ending your your college career in the tournament and then playing in such an important game? I mean, it, mean, it means a lot. I mean, I came here my freshman year. I told Coach Miller we was coming back. I actually, me and Caleb actually promised that my freshman year. We got here. I mean, we got here. I wanted to make more history, man. I was, I was just, I just wanted to make more history here than what we did my freshman year. Okay, we're gonna go back to Joe Serrera. Uh, hopefully, we can get him on here in a second. I think I made. Yep, there you go, Joe. Go ahead. They don't, what, what did you say to your teammates or what are you going to say to your teammates about what they need to do now, what you, the torch that you're passing to them and what they need to do to carry on your, your legacy? Uh, I, I told them, first thing I told them I hit the locker room, I told them I love them and thank you for a, a wonderful season. We had a great season. I went to war with those boys. They was they was they was with me side by side. When win or lose, we was we just kept coming together. And uh, uh, what I told them, I mean, what I'm gonna tell them when I see them when we you know get back, I'm gonna tell them like keep this thing going. I mean, as you can see, I'm a I think I'm a walking example when that comes to uh, something. I mean, hard work is really gonna show at the end of the day, and I think that's what I'm gonna tell them. Hard work, right, get back here, and we gonna, we're we not just going to enjoy this moment next time. I mean, I'm with they UNCG always going to be my family. I think they're going to conquer this moment some point in time uh, after I leave. Okay, we're going to go back to Kevin McCaskill, Jr. Uh, go ahead, Kevin. Hi, uh, Kevin McCaskill, Jr. from FP Sports, uh, Springfield, Mass. Uh, Coach Miller said that he believes that if a, if a team gives you the opportunity that you could play in the NBA because you're um, uh, elite pretty much on the defensive end, do you feel that about yourself? Do you do you feel you, do you feel like you can play in the NBA? Yes, I do. I do actually. I mean, 
I mean, I was just guarding six eight, six nine. I, I don't care what size you is. I don't care what height you is. I think, I think my heart is gonna go over that. I've been. I mean, I'm a. I think my 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 record shows that I'm an elite defender. You know, I've been on the top list of steals for the past three years now. I mean, I don't know where else to put it. If that ain't an elite defender, I mean. I play my butt off on, when it comes to defense. That's the one thing about me. My offense, I, that's what triggers my offense, is my defense. We have time for one more question, if there is one. Right now, I do not see any. Okay, we do have one. Uh, we'll take last question uh, from Eddie Hughes. Once again, give your name and affiliation. Uh, Eddie, where did you go? Uh, go ahead, Eddie. Isaiah, um, how special is UNCG and Coach Miller? You came there as a freshman. Y'all made an NCAA tournament. You're leaving, making the NCAA tournament. And how special can this program be moving forward with what all you've done there in your time? This this place is very special. I mean, this is this is a community that you don't get it. You don't get a lot. Well, I haven't had a lot in my life. I mean, this community is really behind you. I mean, this school is behind you. I mean. To like to the AD to the people to the people like just loads to the teachers at school everything it just this place is very it's just something I'll never forget something I'll always be grateful for like the position they put me in with school and basketball I'm always gonna appreciate them they're very special to me Isaiah thank you for your time thank you. Thanks, everyone. That's it for this post-game news conference for UNC Greensboro. Uh, a transcript of Coach Miller's interview will be provided by ASAP Sports, posted along with a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.veritone.com. That's 